Hello grade tens. In this lesson we look at the electromagnetic spectrum. This spectrum is a list of all the frequencies at which electrons can oscillate and all the wavelengths of the waves that they emit. You'll remember from lesson three that when an electron oscillates it generates an electromagnetic wave that radiates away from the electron. The wave travels away at the speed of light. Long before anyone knew how to create an electromagnetic wave, James Clerk Maxwell, a young Scottish physicist, had worked out what would happen if an electric charge were accelerated up and down so that it oscillated. In 1873, he published his theory using four equations that described how an electromagnetic wave would behave. In 1887, Heinrich Hertz, a young scientist living in Germany, was able to test Maxwell's predictions. He produced an electromagnetic wave in the following way. He set up an apparatus that produced a rapidly alternating electric field. Then he put a ring-shaped receiver at the other side of the room. When he switched on the transmitting apparatus, he was able to see a very small spark between the terminals of the receiver. He had shown that oscillating electric charges could transfer energy through space to a receiver. Maxwell's equations predicted that there are electromagnetic waves at all frequencies at which an electron can vibrate. Scientists set to work to find these other waves and soon began to arrange them in terms of their frequencies. Let's recall the relationship between the frequency and wavelength of a wave. Remember that the speed of the electromagnetic wave is constant. It is c, the speed of light. How does the wavelength of a wave change if the frequency of the oscillating electrons increases? For example, if the frequency is 5 times 10 to the power 14 hertz, the speed c equals 5 times 10 to the power 14 hertz times 600 nanometers. How will the wavelength change if the electrons oscillate at twice that frequency? If we double the frequency to 10 times 10 to the power 14, then we must halve the wavelength to 300 nanometers so that the speed c remains constant. That's right, as the frequency increases the wavelength becomes shorter. A wave's frequency and its wavelength are tied together by their product c, so we can describe the wave in terms of either frequency or wavelength. Now we're going over to Diyasha, who will explain how all of the frequencies of electromagnetic radiation can be arranged on a scale. She will also describe the effects of different frequencies. All electromagnetic radiation can be divided into seven categories, depending on the wavelength and frequency of the radiation. These seven categories make up the electromagnetic spectrum. We are going to examine the waves of the electromagnetic spectrum in decreasing order according to wavelength. In other words, from the longest waves to the shortest waves. We will also consider sources of these waves apart from the sun and stars and some of the ways in which we use them. First, there are radio waves. Radio waves have the longest wavelengths but they have the lowest frequencies. Their wavelengths range between 1000 meters and 0,1 meters with frequencies between 10 to the 6 hertz and 10 to the 10 hertz. Radio waves are mainly produced by very distant star systems called quasars and neutron stars called pulsars. We can detect this type of long wave radiation using radio telescopes. Because the source of the radiation is so far away, the information we collect using these telescopes is actually very old, possibly even as old as the universe itself. At the moment, South Africa is making a bid to become the host of the square kilometer array of radio telescopes, known as the SKA. The SKA will hopefully help astronomers and physicists to unravel some of the mysteries of how the universe was formed. 
In addition to these natural sources of radio waves, people produced radio waves using radio and television transmitters. We used radio waves to send radio and television signals all around the world. This technology has impacted all our lives and changed the way we communicate. Cellular phones are newer than radios and televisions, but also use radio waves to send and receive information. They are becoming essential communication tools for all people everywhere. Second in wavelength are microwaves. Microwaves have wavelengths between 15 centimeters and 0,1 centimeters with frequencies ranging from 10 to the 10 hertz and 10 to the 12 hertz. People are able to generate microwaves using electron tubes called klystrons. We use microwaves in satellite communication, microwave cooking, radar speed trapping guns and for radar air traffic control. Next, we have infrared waves. Infrared waves have wavelengths between 10 to the minus 3 meters and 10 to the minus 6 meters with frequencies between 10 to the 12 hertz and 10 to the 15 hertz. They are produced by any hot bodies such as humans, fires and the sun. The red spots on this infrared picture of a human show the parts of the body which are the hottest. We use infrared radiation to cook food in conventional ovens. But infrared radiation does not only relate to high temperatures. Infrared waves are used in optical fibers for communication and even your TV's remote control uses these waves. In addition, chemists and forensic scientists use infrared spectrometry to identify the characteristics of many molecules. Notice that as the wavelengths are getting shorter, so the frequencies are getting higher. Next, we have visible light. This region of the electromagnetic spectrum can be broken down into a range of different colors of light, from red to violet. The visible light spectrum has wavelengths ranging from 10 to the minus 6 meters for red light to 10 to the minus 7 meters for violet light. The frequencies range between 10 to the 15 hertz for red light and 10 to the 16 hertz for violet light. In addition to the sun, light is produced by light bulbs and lasers. Although all the other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum are important, this part is actually the most important for life on Earth. The most obvious consequence of light is that we can see the world around us. But the most important use of light takes place in plants. Plants absorb light energy from the sun in the presence of chlorophyll and use the light energy to produce food from carbon dioxide and water. Without this amazing and very complex process called photosynthesis, no life would be possible on Earth. The next section of the spectrum is ultraviolet radiation. This has wavelengths between 10 to the minus 7 meters and 10 to the minus 8 meters and frequencies between 10 to the 16 hertz and 10 to 17 hertz. There are three main types of UV radiation, UVA, UVB and UVC. The main source of this radiation is the sun. UVC is blocked out by ozone in the atmosphere, so we don't need to worry too much about it. UVB radiation is able to penetrate the epidermal layer of the skin and is the cause of sunburn. UVA radiation is able to penetrate right to the dermis of the skin, which can also cause skin damage and cancer. Ultraviolet radiation, sometimes called UV light, cannot be detected by our eyes, but can cause damage to them. So make sure you don't look at a UV light for too long without wearing eye protection. UV light can be quite useful too.
It is used to pick up invisible markings like these on our banknotes and is also used by scientists to detect traces of blood and to analyze organic compounds. Next, we have X-rays. X-rays have wavelengths between 10 to the minus 8 meters and 10 to the minus 11 meters. Their frequencies range between 10 to the 17 hertz and 10 to the 21 hertz. Because X-rays have a very short wavelength, they are able to penetrate many things. They can be detected on photographic paper and are used to take pictures of the bones of the human body. They also have security applications, such as scanners at airports. Finally, there are gamma rays. Their wavelengths are between 10 to the minus 11 meters and 10 to the minus 15 meters. Their frequency range is from 10 to the 21 hertz to 10 to the 24 hertz. Gamma rays are produced by radioactive elements and are used to kill cancer cells, sterilize equipment and to increase the shelf life of food. Although the different regions of the spectrum are all very interesting, we will now only focus on the visible light spectrum. The sun produces white light, which is naturally split into a rainbow as it passes through tiny drops of water in the atmosphere after or during a rainstorm. A rainbow shows us that white light can be broken up into a range of different colors. We can break light up into the same range of colors by using a prism or a diffraction grating and a white light source. The visible spectrum consists of seven colors of light. Each color has its own wavelength and frequency. In order of decreasing wavelength and increasing frequency, the colors of light are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Remember that the reason we see things when we look at the world around us is because light traveling from a source of light like the sun is reflected off the object we are looking at and then enters our eyes. We see different colors because different surfaces reflect different parts of the visible light spectrum. So, we see this square as blue because blue light is reflected off its surface and enters our eyes. And we see this as red because red light is reflected off its surface. If no light is reflected off a surface, the object appears black. And if all the colors are reflected, the object appears white. And that's all for this lesson. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.ca.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.